All right, still continuing our climb up to 30,000 feet. Everything's looking pretty good. Take another look outside. While we uh, continue our climb, I want to start looking ahead and getting prepared for our descent and arrival in San Francisco. <clears throat> So let's hop back out to Navigrav for a quick moment, and we'll zoom out here, go up to San Francisco. Now, when we were setting up our flight plan in SimBrief and importing it into the Microsoft Flight Simulator, the assigned star uh, that was annotated in Microsoft Flight Simulator was the Surfer SERFR for, for runway 28 right. And in SimBrief, or I should say in Navigraph, I don't have a star aligned with our approach. So we'll go out here and we'll look at arrivals. Here's Surfer 4. We'll go ahead and put that on to our approach. Take a look at this. That's quite the little procedure, isn't it? Wow. Let's take a look at that chart. So we already have, looks like, a waypoint up here. Which waypoint is this? It looks like the Eddy waypoint was already in our flight plan. So we'll likely uh, be following these waypoints. We'll see. I don't think it's going to do it direct. We'll see. So we've got at least... We've at least got the star assigned in Navigraph so we can track along. We'll see which route it takes uh, when we get closer to arrival. And then once we get confirmation of the runway, we can add the runway in as well. Alright, our last uh, climb up to our cruise altitude of 36,000 feet. One thing that uh, I did miss on this flight, our transition altitude was 18,000 feet. Uh, we never did switch over to uh, standard. In, in my experience with the other Airbus aircraft, as well as the Boeing aircraft, you would typically get a warning or indication on the primary flight display indicating that you should uh, change your uh, barometric pressure to standard. So we'll do that now. That looks correct. Los Angeles Center, Alaska 1018 is climbing through flight level 320 for flight level 360. Alaska 1018, Los Angeles Center, continue to IKA YE as planned. Oh, I love the road on the coast. 
That's nice. I wish it wasn't so hazy outside. Not only for me, but for you too. Closing in on our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. Oops. I bumped the I bumped the throttle on the uh, flight controller, put the plane into toga. It looks like uh, no real harm. We sped up there a little bit. Still in cruise, everything looks good. And those are the types of oopses that uh, get you into trouble. Not so much that you can't uh, deal with it, you know, in real life, but the simulator. Whew, you do something it doesn't like, crash the desktop, or who knows what else is going to happen. So I would think it wouldn't be too much longer now before Air uh, ATC contacts us and starts to give us uh, our descent guidance. And there you have it. We start our descent to San Francisco, descending to 24,000 feet. Uh, entering the descent phase, looks like the plane is decelerating before it starts its descent. It's a little hard to see these indicators uh, with this current glare. So this little piece of land up here, uh, this should be Monterey, California. Ascending through 25,000 feet, our uh, speed has changed to our descent profile, slowing to 240 knots indicated airspeed.
leveling off at 24,000. should look ahead at the airport while well, we've got a couple of minutes. Alaska 1018 descend and maintain 16,000 feet. 16,000 descend. Descend and maintain 16,000 feet, Alaska 1018. Okay, descent, thrust idle, so... Come on. There it goes, starting to descend. Go back here and bring open San Francisco. I want to look at the airport real quick. Airport info. So 28 left. Is that what it said? No, 28 right. If that's the runway we get assigned, just looking at general vicinity. So we're coming in, and when we exit the runway, we'll likely be exiting to the left to approach the terminal. So just keep that in mind. Looks like uh, Terminal 2. Yeah, so we'll come off the runway to the left. And go back to our approach. This is us continuing on the approach. We are flying the waypoints associated with the approach. Sending down to 16,000 feet. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet, so there's some things that we can dump into the management computer right now. For performance, uh, we can go to the approach. Uh, likely going to be 2.9 or 9 or 2 is what we're going to expect for barometric pressure, so Q and H. Uh, transition altitude 18,000. Look at our approach speed here is at 147. Just make a note of that. Uh, we need a decision altitude. We don't have the runway assignment quite yet, but if we were to get 28 right, so once that's confirmed, we're going to have a. Decision altitude of 213 feet. Coming down through 10,000 feet, we'll go up and get our landing lights turned on, get our seatbelt signs turned on. We'll go down here and just get prepared for landing, go ahead and put our auto brake to medium. Uh, we can go ahead and arm the spoiler now 
need it, we can always rearm it later. That's the information we were looking for. Make sure we're not getting all jacked up here in our flight. Looks like we're okay. Coming on in. Everything still looks good. We're at 6,000 feet. Uh, approach phase is active at the moment, so that's good. We are flying at green dot speed. Uh, with that, our, our radio navigation should be set for ILS 28 right. 110.75. Let me just go verify that in Navigraph. 110.7 is what I have over here. Approach course 284 degrees. Again, the course is off. I don't, I don't know why the course is not correct. It's got 298 degrees. Continue to track where we are. 240 knots coming in. Uh, looks like the... Thousand feet. Descend and maintain four thousand feet, Alaska one zero one eight. Descend to four thousand. Looking for our approach fix, which is going to be Seppin. Looks like is that that's gonna be the initial there. Seepin, Seppin. So we're not far from there now. We're going to go flaps one. Why slow down? Why are you speeding up? There we go. Should have let myself get down a little bit lower. It's going a little bit fast for flaps one. Three 
30,000 feet. Thought we were going to 3,000, we we're actually descending to 4,000 feet, so now we've got the 3,000 feet programmed in. Still should be configured for landing. Go ahead and turn the ILS system on. Verify we've got uh, correct ILS, so 10975 IFNP. That is IC for 28 right, IG a WQ. I don't think, not sure that's accurate yet. IGWQ for 28 right. We're getting really close. ILS 28 right. So my chart is not matching up with the frequency currently shown on my PFD. Alaska 1018, you are one three miles southeast of Sierra Alpha November Foxtrot Romeo Alpha November Charlie India Sierra Charlie Oscar India November Tango Lima. Contact San Francisco Tower on ONE 20 decimal flight when inbound on the approach. Tower on ONE 20 decimal flight, Alaska 1018. San Francisco Tower, Alaska 101812 miles southeast inbound ILS runway. It does say 28 right on my CDU. Uh, we're going to lock onto the localizer. Uh, it looks like the runway is up there ahead of us. We're just looking to get engaged on the localizer. Twenty-eight right should be there ahead of us. So I don't think we're getting the right signal. So we're just going to manually take over. So we'll turn off the landing system. We're going to take the plane uh, out of autopilot and we're going to manually land this bad boy 28 right. Get in the right position here. Gear down. Flaps two. Flaps three. Flaps full Alaska flaps.
lined up with the runway. Start looking down the runway. Kill the engines. Any reversers? Sixty knots. Reversers disengaged. Said we're turn exiting off to the left. Well, not bad. Uh, some some weird stuff going on there with the uh, ILS and designation of 28 right. We definitely were not on the localizer coming in. Uh, so uh, we took control of the aircraft early on, ignored the automation. Brought it in for ourselves, and uh, it's always a hairy. It's always hairy as an inexperienced pilot uh, bringing the plane down to the runway. But uh, uh, that didn't go too bad. It actually, went pretty well. I'm okay with that landing. Got lined up pretty well. Uh, let's get the uh, APU uh, master on. Turn off the strobe light. Get our landing lights situated here. Uh, get our taxi lights turned on. Everything else looks good. We'll go ahead and do APU start. I'll look down here real quick and get our uh, flaps all the way back in. Speed brake, uh, speed brake's already disarmed. Things look good here. Let's contact ground and get our 121.8, 121.8. Get our taxi to the gate. San Francisco ground Alaska 1018 taxi to the gate. Alaska 1018 taxi to gate Bravo 3 Niner by taxiway Tango cross runway 10 right Delta Bravo Echo Alpha Mike 1. Taxiing right. to gate Bravo 3 Niner using taxiway Tango cross runway 10 right Delta Bravo Echo Alpha Mike 1 Alaska 1018. Uh, it always helps to have the airport chart, so I'm just going to open up the airport again. Figure out where we are, so if we take a look at that. So here we are, uh, just landed on 28 right. We're sitting on T, so T, we're going to cross 10 right, right directly in front of us. Uh, then proceed via D down B to E. Here's E, so we're going to come in E. Uh, it looks like we're going to proceed on this inner taxiway to A to M1. And M1 is way down here. And from M1, looks like M1 is going to take us up here towards a gate allegedly that's up in this general vicinity uh, that's what I got so that's the plan right now we'll see if we can't pull that off D to B so I'm in the outer taxiway and at E we're gonna go to the inner taxiway that's I'll try and monitor that here off to the side so let's go back and see if we can't pull that off Should be good to taxi. A quick look around here. Just 
makes it a little easier to see at times, especially when we're looking for labels. Watch our speed here. We're going to cross over. I said to go to D, so we're going to turn here a little bit to the left, go across the runway. Ooh. This is D here. Then this inner taxiway here should be B. Watch our speed. Yep, this should be B here. Then up here is going to be E, where we're going to transition to the A taxiway. And I'm going to go with, I think it's going to be this line here. Uh, a might have been actually the inner, the inner one there. Looks like I'm staying with B. I should have gone to the inside, so we'll cut to the inside here coming up. Continue uh, decent ways down here on A. Well, looking pretty good. Uh, all in all, uh, that was a smooth flight considering it was a no prep. Uh, this is the first time I landed on that runway. Uh, we dealt with uh, an ILS issue landing went fairly smooth I was pleased with it so uh, yeah this this was a good no prep flight M1 is gonna be way down here to the end Gate, they say, gate B39, gate B39. Slowing down a little bit much here, just putting a little more into it. Looking for M1. M1 up and around. Looks like that's what it just said. The 
this first one here should be M1. That's what we're going to... Although, maybe not. It might be M2. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. Considering there is no other one, this is likely M2. Yep, this is M2. Let's just jump over here to M1. Okay, and we got to find our gate. We're going to cheat here for a second. Pretty sure it's in this neck of the woods. Let's just jump out. Let's see if we can't figure it out. So B39. Doesn't look like there are markings on the tarmac. Are there are markings on the building. I'm not seeing. Oh, wait, there's something down there. What's that say? Uh, there's 37. Thirty-eight. What? <laughs> Thirty-eight. Where's thirty-nine? Is that down here, maybe? You've got a plane. You would think that this would be thirty-nine, but I, there's no lines. Right? This is... I have no lines on the tarmac to park. And if that's 38, and that's A5, A3, these back here, right, that's 24B. I mean, I got, I got folks waiting here, but that's 24B. 